Uh-oh. Mm, uh, Boggle. Alright, so last time you guys finished uh, exploring all the way up to the top of the tower, fought a bunch of stuff, killed some robots, and eventually killed the wizard Yulin Sky Tower. You then got together to try to figure out what the hell you're going to do next, uh, considering you hadn't thought very far past killing Yulin. So, what do you guys want to do? <laughs> Okay, so we didn't fully explore everything, correct? Correct. Um, I think we explored this roof. room that we're in. Well, well you and you and uh, Aladar. Aladar. Did, but yeah, well, no, they did search everything in this room, though. So what? This is, here's what I would do: is every room, every floor, including the roof, that you guys want to investigate. I will let two people roll, and without investigating anything in particular, and if you roll high enough, I'll tell you if you find anything else in that room. Um, other than that, I mean, you got a bunch of stuff. Uh, you've got a prisoner in the basement. You've got an imp and an Eric Croker that you rescued, and other people in the basement. So... I'm sure there's lots of things that you do, you have that you don't really know about. Do we want to start sorry. at this? Do we want to start on the top floor and work our way down, or do you want to start in this room and go up and then back down again? It makes sense just to start at the top, go down. Does somebody have yeah. the schematics for the uh, flying motorcycle up there? I don't know if we found the schematics to it, did we? We found it for the ship, I think. Somebody found something. Was it just the ship? Mm, yeah, I think Aladar found the ship out, like outline. That was where it yeah, said, I, like I the pixie the, dust. Yeah, yeah ship okay. blueprints. Holding flagship. For a sneaky boom bam. Schematics are three point five. Yeah, that's the ship. Okay, I may want to take a look at the uh, motorcycle a little bit. And just search upstairs in general. Okay. Skelly's going upstairs. Who else is going upstairs? I, go yeah, up. I'm going to go upstairs. Only two of you can... Only, yeah, only yeah, two John, people. Oh. Yeah, John can cool. go. Alright. Uh, you two can roll. Make an investigation check. But um, even though it's only two people, if you guys have any spells you can cast to make your rolls better, you can do that. You can use any inspirations you have. You know, I'm not limiting it like that. I don't have any of that stuff. All right. Oh, jeez. I don't even have to look. You guys don't find anything with a six and three. Uh, Should I roll again? You could use your inspiration if you want. Roll again. Yeah. This is investigating. That's not including if you want to look at the motorcycle. I will still let you do that. Yeah, I specifically want to see if I can... Um, understand how it works, I guess. Since I have some expertise in at least water vehicles, which is kind of same ballpark kind of thing. Yes, the barbarian who knows about sailing definitely knows something about a flying motorcycle. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that I would know, but I know about <laughs> piloting an object that moves on uh, something sure. other than your but feet. I had to say that, though. You understand. <laughs> 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 I don't want anybody to be mad, but I did have to say that. <laughs> All right, uh, tower top. Are you doing something, Jim, or not? I was gonna use my inspiration to roll. Try to see if I can roll better. Sure, go ahead. So I just click on the inspiration, or yeah, get rid of it and then roll again.
Um, okay. Uh, there isn't there isn't anything uh, additional to find on uh, the top of the tower. Um, but uh, last time, number one mentioned that when he sat on the motorcycle, he ended up with dust from this little baggie on the roof here. Um, all over his pants. And so, you do manage to investigate around, and you see that the motorcycle thing does look like it was sprinkled with the stuff, and you find some on the ground around the bag, which indicates that it probably just happened before you guys got there, that he dumped out the contents of the bag onto this motorcycle thing, and and then was trying to fly it away. And you remember that before Scully broke it, there was a ramp over here that he was trying to drive it off of. Okay. Um, and then Scully... Um, what the heck? What would what would be a mechanical engineering check? Um, I, mean, I think it's got to be intelligence. <laughs> yeah, um, handling. Handling. <laughs> no... Performance? Uh, no. I don't want to do investigation all night either. Slight of hand. Survival. Okay. Let's do... I guess just do, in, in, just do intelligence. Straight up intelligence. Okay. And what are you trying to figure out about it? Like how it works? Yeah, I guess, um, yeah, um, gas, brake, uh, how the steering works, um, how to turn it on, um, if there's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, button. I mean, you, you, somebody had figured out last time, I can't remember who it was, that there's basically three level levers. Uh, one no, no, Ryan. on the left there's a lever that turns it on and off and then on the right there's a lever one one controls um, the speed of the wheels and one controls the speed of the fan on the back um, but there you don't see any mechanism on it that would cause it to go up um, you think turning is probably controlled just by leaning side to side um, and maybe, maybe turning the handlebars a little bit. Um, but you're not finding anything on it that would cause it to actually go up. Okay, that's probably where the dust comes into play. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, let's, uh... I have a bag of what? dust. Let's see what other things we can figure out. Okay, well, while you two were doing that, what were other people doing? I cast False Life on myself. <laughs> okay. Um, Travis, I have a bag of dust if you want it. Okay. Travis. What? I have a bag of dust if you want it. Um, I can hold on to it. I don't have yeah, like a suggestion to use it with yet. Oh, I didn't know if you wanted to try it on the motorcycle. I think we, if we're going to plan on using the motorcycle, we try it, but let's just save it in case we need it for something else first. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to help Smashy with what she should do. That's so why I wasn't listening. <laughs> I'll search this floor. That... I'm on right now. Anybody oh, want to search down. this floor with him? I mean, somebody should. It would have to be either Alad or Cora. I already searched it, though. That's true. Okay, so, just just number one. Fine. Um... So, number one, you search this room by yourself. Um, let's see. I 
Okay, let's let's just start from the top. 18 is pretty good. Um, <laughs> so you guys, um, you number one, you know that Jem found a book in here that you guys haven't been able to read yet. Um, the rumpled empty canvas sheet here looks like there had been a pile of scrolls underneath it. Um, but you've kind of found what, what had probably been underneath that already. Okay. Um, you understand looking at these two pillars that there had likely been two things on there. When you initially came in, there was a green orb around this. Aladar used the green gem and made that go out. You guys had also find, found the red gem right here, which was already glowing. And the fact that you found a baggie on the roof indicates that the other baggie had been underneath this pedestal. Okay. And that he used the stone, turned it off, took the baggie, dropped the rock, and ran. Um, that's all you find in this room. Now that are you were going downstairs, nobody has searched this room, right? Yeah, I'll do this room. Okay. It's pretty good. Cora, what are you doing? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Your inspiration. Try to search the room with Aladar. Yeah, I can go down and search the room with Aladar. All right, I'll let you search before I be in there. Hey oh. Huh. Oh, I nice. investigate the shit out of that room. <laughs> so Eladar, you start to get like you're just tired from the day. And like you go over and you're like, I'm just gonna sit down and rest my eyes and you just like sit down and just fall asleep. Mm. Um meanwhile Cora searches around this room. Um and so basically what she figures out looking around this room with all like the glowing crap on the floor. Um, this is actually a teleportation circle, um, and for whatever reason, Cora, because of like her CD contacts sneaking around and everything, she's actually seen where a lot of these are hidden before, so she knows what they are. And um, most teleportation circles are basically a pad where you can get from where you are to where you want to go. And as long as where you want to go, if you know the destination, and it, it has like a permanent teleportation circle that you know the code, then you can just go there. Um, if you know the spell teleport or teleportation circle that you can like set up a temporary one, if you know the code, you can just appear there. Like it's 100% accuracy. It works every time. Um... To set up a new teleportation circle, you have to cast the spell at, at the same spot every day for a full year. And each time you cast it, it's like super expensive. So it's really hard to set one up. But once it's there, you can use it to teleport without expending any material components. So he uses this to get in and out of the tower rather than having to sail. Um, mm -hmm. Your party doesn't know any other runes, but if someone wants to... Um, they could try to memorize the runes here or write them down, um, and then it's going to be a wh whether you were able to accurately draw them. Um, other than that, the only other thing in this room is a little table with a small, fancy-looking book on it. Hmm. 
You gonna look at the book? Mm, yeah, look at the fucking book. There you go. Um, so you look through this book and you see that there are pages and pages of symbols that you don't understand, but then at the bottom of each page there's a set of initials. Oh. And that's it for that room. What else? Um, am I like ready to be doing more things now? Mm -hmm. Everybody is. Everybody did something, so everybody's ready again. Okay, I'm gonna go downstairs then. Okay. Ooh. Okay, we're done with this room though, right? Yes. Um. That's upstairs, right? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go downstairs. Um, can I take the time to look at the Sky Tower's wand? Yes. Um. Basically, you would spend an hour. And if you don't have a spell, it's basically an attempt. You spend an hour attempting to try to figure out what it does. And you you could fail it because you don't have a spell. It's a matter of like trial and error while you're trying it out. I don't have a spell, so. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Like make, an arc make an arcana check. What kind of spell are you, do you mean? Hi. Just oh, I like identify. Good today. All right. Uh, you figure out it's a wand that requires attunement in order to use, uh, called a wand of binding. Mm. Cool. Wow, oh, old pasta. Strong. None of us are very smart, are we? Nope. And none of us have any charisma, right? I do. Uh, me oh, too. that's right. You two have charisma. Okay. We're just all stupid. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Stupid. Uh, we got four charisma. other people. That makes it difficult. <laughs> Can I do um, an investigation check of this room? The bedroom? Yep, so you're back in the bedroom. Yeah. Does anybody else want to search with her? Yeah, I want to try to find... Um... Research notes of any kind, I guess, uh, specifically. Okay. You, so, which room are you saying you want to search? I'll go with her to his room first. Okay, both of you make investigation checks. Damn it. Six and 13. All right. Um, Um, oh, you already figured out about the flying carpet. Uh, yeah, you know what? You realize one thing that you didn't look at before in this room is that he's got a table on his nightstand. Or, I'm sorry, a book on his nightstand. Um, and so specifically looking around uh, for notes, you think, well, this is a good place for him to leave something he's particularly interested in. Um, and you look at the book, and it's written in common. Um, and it says, it's called Interactions of the Elemental Planes. And the foreword says that it's about all the ways in which the four elemental planes react with each other. Um, Did you say we found a flying carpet? Yeah, remember, it attacked me. Yeah. I didn't know that was a flying carpet, though. I oh. thought I just put it in my bag. Um, it was a living carpet? What the hell is it called? All I know is that we defeated it and then I put it in my bag. Yeah. I don't remember hearing about it being a flying carpet, though. 
Well, let me figure out what it's called, okay? Uh, I guess if I just look at the word carpet. I mean, it would have to fly in some manner to wrap itself around me. Well, because it, it was like enchanted or alive, right? It's not called carpet. Is it a rug? We defeated it, so wouldn't it lose oh, its... Oh, rug of smothering is what it's called. Um, well, you remember what happened is when you defeated it, a spirit came out of it and then, like, dissipated. Yeah, yeah, that's which right. Which, you remember, did not right. happen you when you defeated, like, the animated swords and animated armors. It only happened with the rug. Hmm. There may be a way to reanimate this carpet to fly us. Or something. Yeah, with the pixie dust. Uh, Maybe. I feel like it would just smother us. Well, if we're in control of it, I don't know if that it would smother us. Mm. Unless it's just chaotic evil. Just well, I don't think the pixie dust clothes. would give it life. It would just make it fly. That's all we want. We just want to fly yeah. up to the other ship. That's what I mean. The powder would make it fly, though. We're assuming, though. We're all so dumb. <laughs> Maybe we no could way just put we the, it out. the powder Wait, on our ship sure? and make our ship fly. So it just gave us our actual intelligence. I feel like if it was that easy. <laughs> yeah. He's just, yeah just, uh, I'm actually a negative one in real life, so that makes sense. Uh, I want to look at this book on his uh, nightstand here. All right. Um, yeah, so you open it up. You see there's six chapters called Air and Earth, Dust, Air and Fire, Smoke. Air and water, ice, earth and fire, magma, earth and water, mud, fire and water, steam. Um, you just kind of flip through the book, and you see that chapters 2 and 6 are highlighted. Ooh. Chapter 2 has a lot of notes indicating that Eulen thought that uh, the flight of air and the power of fire might be useful, but he concludes that it is too volatile. Um, Can Scully chapter, even read? Three there. Chapter six, yes. So stupid. Uh, in chapter six, he notes that he is intrigued that a combination of fire and water creates a creature made of air and th thought that it might be the most powerful of the six combinations because of that fact. It also seemed to be more stable than smoke. Creature? Oh, that's right. You it's an elemental. You gotta edit, cut, right. paste, save, go to player. Oh, I, wrote, I still wrote chapter three though. It's only chapter six. I show this to Jen if she isn't already looking at it. Remember, when you were in the basement, he had one of each creature type down there. A yeah, so... A construct, an elemental, a humanoid, an undead, etc. He was, he was trying to find every different way that creatures fly and trying to find a way to put that into a ship. Can I um, do some kind of check to see if I would know, like, what kind of creature it's talking about? Like, if I've seen it before or something? Um, what are you? What, what are you? I'm a water ganasi. You know what this is. You know what he's talking about. He's talking about a steam method. Steam method. Do you know what a yeah. picture is? Do you have a picture of it? Yeah, methods methods are little creatures. They look like haunters, the Pokemon. Um, and there are six different types of methods, and each one is a combination of two of two elements. So I'll just I'll bring I'll bring a icon into the room with you. I'll put everybody in the room too. That's a smoke method. 
<clears throat> handbook. Okay. That's what a smoke method talks about, or it looks like. There was one of those in the basement? <laughs> um, I'll say you remember that there was a smoke method in the basement. But smoke smoke methods are um, air and fire, and he was saying he thought that was too volatile. He wanted he thought fire and water was better because they make steam, and he thought it was interesting that fire and water would make a creature made of air, and figured that would probably made it the most powerful of all the combinations. So what could we use that information for, guys? Well, there's two things you're trying to figure out ultimately. How to attack the ship, how you can get yourselves in position to attack it, and uh -huh. two, what weaknesses the ship might have. And, you know, I've I've got like 20 options for each of those things. So, like, definitely don't get caught up on something that's confusing you. Just use a different plan then. So should we guess that possibly he has fire, water, or steam methods powering the ship up there, maybe? Possibility. For sure. I'm, I'm, also, have... go I'm also going to give you a hint. That you have now found one book about the Feywild, which was saying that it was interesting that Pixies can apparently fly without actually using their wings and and that the spell dispel magic didn't do anything to stop them from flying and the other thing is that you've now found this book where he apparently dug through all the combinations of the ele elemental planes and found the one that he thought was strongest you also have a third book you found that you haven't been able to read yet yeah the unknown language Pixies are steam-powered? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, God damn it, do we really have to have this conversation? <laughs> um, she didn't tell anybody about the book, did she? Yeah, she did. Does anybody well, have the ability to read that? No, because I checked. Because I have... Or wait. Yeah, no. So that's the one that wasn't Elvish or Primordial, right? Yeah, we don't know what the language is. Well, you guys eventually have to take a long rest, so there's there's two things we can do here. You can eat, you can keep talking, which is fine, and I'll leave you alone. You can search more of the floors. You've searched the top floor, and you've got four you got four floors left, plus the basement and the sub basement that you haven't looked at again. You still have a bunch of stuff in your inventory you haven't finished. But if you guys take a long rest, which you can do, everyone is allowed to change out at least one spell. I, I know Jem can change as many as she wants. Uh, Aladar can change one, and number one could change one. So if there's a spell you don't have, you could trade it out overnight for something that you think would be more helpful for this. Um, and don't forget, you didn't really search the library. The library. Hmm. Oh. Anything there? Is there like a list of spells that I can look at? How do I do that? Yeah, let me. I'll I'll DM you on um. Discord, okay. Okay. Um, you also have a prisoner tied up in the basement, and Fez seemed like he was sticking around. I wanna. I have this magic wand. I wanna, uh, or whatever. What are the limitations of your broom of flying? Well, I know it's four hundred pounds, but I mean, can you fly it as long as you want? Like, could you, in theory, just fly yourself to the ship? So, I don't know. Look at use your item. Look at it. Okay. On the right side, you go to magic items. You go down to Broom of Flying. I read it. All right. He asked me another question, too, and I don't know what he asked, so I can't answer it. Hmm. Ship might be pretty fast, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, that doesn't say there's any limitation. Wait. Do you think the ship would just run away from us? I mean, or if it sees me coming, then... Joe, I just tried to shoot is us there down. Any, is there anything that we could get that could make us faster than that ship would probably be? No. Probably not. Unless there's a teleportation ring on it. Yeah, I mean, if we can somehow get someone to sneak up there, find the teleportation circle, write down the runes, and then come back and we all just teleport to the ship. Unless it's written down somewhere here in this tower. In the library. That's also possible. Um, I, can... I want to, Joe, what I had said is I want to um, see if I can figure out what my magic wand does. Okay, um, you'll have to spend an hour doing that and then make an arcana check. Um, Cora didn't do a second thing yet. Is there something you want to do? And you make yeah. a kind of check. Jack, why don't we wait until uh, we're all short resting or long resting? Well, um, can, I mean, he hasn't done his second thing yet, so that that's what he can do. Okay. Or a second thing, that's fine. I mean, I don't care when I do it, as long as I do it before we move to the next uh, engagement. Well, okay, regardless of what everybody else is doing, Aladar and Cora get a second thing. By second thing, do you mean like search another room or whatever just... you want to do? If you if you have something you want to spend an hour looking at to see if you can figure it out, that's fine too. I don't know what objects you have. Um, yeah, you could search another room. I want to search the library. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. So you guys can go and you'll spend an hour searching the library. So let me go to the library. Um. Okay, make both of you make an investigation check. Is this the library? I'm sorry, I put you... A... Okay. It's one more down. It doesn't matter. I was going to say, it doesn't look like a library. Yeah. <laughs> Cora got a 16. Eladar got a 13. Um, How many successes did you guys have last time? In the library? Yeah. Wait, who did you just say yeah? I think you guys only had one. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay. Let me do this. Oops. Oops! Oh no. Alright, um, you guys search around. Let's see. I got a few things I gotta look at here. Okay, I want both of you to roll a d100. What? Who the fuck? I rolled a, t a t <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, R hey, Ryan. You like that, huh? Yeah, why can't I ever get this? Yeah, Ryan has this ability with his other character that every day he can roll one d100, and if he rolls lower than his level... His god can do something like incredible for him, and every day he rolls like a sixty. Oh my god! <laughs> I've Figures rolled like twenty times now. Yeah, by this time you should have gotten it. I know. Okay, you guys don't find anything that is relevant to your situation at all because your D one hundred roll was was really low. But however, you do. Who rolled higher, Cora? You find a scroll that you can't understand. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, but you you identify it as a magic scroll. I'll bring it back to the group and say, Ah, I found something. Magic y, I don't understand. Okay. Um, I mean I would assume that all of you look at it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me get them back to where they supposed to be. Actually I'm gonna move you guys all down a level. To make it easier on me. Um, okay, I think that one of you is a sorcerer, right? Me. Okay. Um, you guys don't have a bard. Okay. You are the only one that can understand it, number one. This is a scroll of animate objects. Ooh. See, that's a scroll <laughs> of animate objects. That's the second scroll you found in the library now. The first one was the one Jem has, Awaken. 
What did you say about my thing? You you found one the first time you guys searched. What did I find? Awaken. Oh, a scroll. Me. I will keep the scroll. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> see what it does. Objects come to life at your command. Choose up to ten non-magical objects within range and not being worn carried. Target animates and becomes a creature under your control until the spell ends or reduces your hit points. Huh. Basically Fantasia. Sweet. Level spell is that? Singer? Fifth level. That's the singer. <laughs> she can do that. <laughs> Probably how those swords were attacking us. That's a really long spell. Yeah, it is. But basically, he can he can make ten little objects like come to life, or like the bigger he does, the fewer objects he can do. Um, he can do. Let's see. Large objects count as four objects, so he could do two large things and one medium, and then they each have their own set of stats depending on how big they are. The bigger they are, the more strength and health they have. The smaller they are, the more dexterity and AC they have, because they're harder to hit. I can do a huge one. of 80 hit points. Right. Now, sorcerers can't learn off scrolls, right? You just get to no. use it one time. Okay. Right. It's yeah. a one, it'd be a one-time use thing. Okay. Can't learn off of it. Okay. What's next? Everybody's free. So we, I'm getting annoyed with the D and D website. Why? Well, because it's not letting me filter anything or sort anything. So it's just like everything is on there, and it's a lot. What do you mean it's not letting you sort any filter or sort? No, I, it's not letting me. Which it's website? Not do anything. D and D Beyond. Like, I'm trying to filter spells so that I don't see, like, level 8 spells, for example, and it's not letting me do that. Okay, well, the link gave you the druid spells, though, right? I don't know. Okay. That's, I mean... Okay. You just opened what you sent me. Let's try this, try this link. Limited just one, two, and three. Okay, thank you. What was it doing? Why wasn't it working? I don't know. I was clicking everything, everything you could click, and it wasn't letting me do anything. Hmm, must be, must be a you thing, because I just went on and it's working fine. Must be a you thing, Travis. Ooh. Your problem. Wait, is this your first time using a computer? <laughs> Wait, is Shut your computer up. plugged in? <laughs> um, I want to talk to my best friend, the Imp. Okay. I want to heal myself. Are we going to do that soon? A little long rest. We don't have to... Well, actually, I don't know if there are going to be reinforcements coming to murder us. Okay. Can, we, can we see if those ro robots are moving outside? Look through a window, if I can do that. What do you mean outside of the beach? Yeah, I don't... Oh, you can't yeah, see that far. I don't know. Like, not even took, if they're moving. It took you guys like three hours to get there. We just put our crystal door up at the uh, entrance. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, you removed the crystal door. All right, didn't, couldn't she put it back up, or are you saying we can't do that anymore? She, she could, but she turned it off because you fell down a bunch of store uh, floors, so she had to open it back up so you could come back in. She didn't put it at the front door, though. She just no, put it way upstairs. Didn't. Anyway, it took you guys like three hours to walk up here, so you can't see them from here. I got you. Oh, nobody would have gone down and told them we were here, because the only one that might have was the girl that we have locked in the basement. True, but I don't know, maybe they had some sort of command. All right. I can never tell with these constructs, Captain. 
Um, okay, so am I with Fez now? Mm -hmm. Hey, Fez. Um, so we are trying to figure out how to get onto that flying ship that the wizard had been studying. Um, do you know where he collected pixie dust from? Okay, I assume the now, fade. Why in the world would you want to go and... Uh, you want to fight that thing? You know how many cannons that thing has? Does it have a lot of cannons? Oh my god, don't get me started! So, if you were me... How would you go about getting past those cannons? Hmm. Probably go when it's dark. Get in okay. some way that isn't the top. So, like, underneath. Or the sides. I mean, it's a ship. Can we, do you think we could fit through, like, the little cannon holes? Uh, how big are they? Oh, well, I thought you would know that. <laughs> Man, I don't know. That's fair. Um, uh, pixie dust. Yeah, uh, a pixie. Are pixies, uh, they're only found in the Fey wild? I mean, Is yeah. Do you, yeah, do you... typically there's one in the basement. Is it, do you, does, has he been harvesting the pixie's dust? Uh, that I don't know, because it's in the area that I couldn't get to. But, uh, I mean, he spent the most time down there with the, the smoke method, the steam method, the pink sea, and me. How do you fly? Is it just the wings? <laughs> He's, like, floating in front of you, flapping his wings. He's like, yeah. yeah. You're really good at it. Jealous. Ah, don't be. It's tiring. I hate my life. <laughs> Why, don't <you> <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you land? Oh, what? Have you looked down? You know, I'm like eight inches tall, buddy. Okay, I'll sit down then. You sit down, and you're, you're still like here. sitting down. You're like, you know, five feet tall because you're huge. He's like, oh, yeah, uh, thanks. Sit, sit, on, sit great. on the table. Sit on the table. He sits on the table that's like two feet tall, and he's just looking straight up at you. <laughs> like, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just lay down. Shit. He just all right. throws all the chess people, I'll all, sit all the, the chess I'll pieces. I'll sit on the floor. I'll sit on the floor. There, better? Your bones nice and, he's, nice he's and just, calm now? He's just throwing <laughs> chess pieces at you. <laughs> just swatting my way unbothered. Um, yeah, okay. he, he had a lot of questions for me, but uh, eh, I wasn't too much help. Did you overhear any of the other, other conversations with the other uh, guys in there? Well, shit, here I was thinking you wanted to know about my conversations. All right, other people's conversations. Well, uh, well you, just, he, you just said that he didn't tell him anything important and he didn't take anything away from you. You just said that. Fez. I just said he had a bunch of questions for me and I didn't know the answers. You said you weren't any help to him. All right, not true? anyway. Well, I mean, I'm not arguing about this. You do what you want. You tell me the important stuff, then. You know I'm trying to get the information. You can't tell me you don't have information and then tell me you get mad at me for not asking you for the information that you don't know. You're not very smart, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I look at him blankly. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes uh, the answers aren't so important as the uh, questions that are being asked, right? It's maybe true. He wanted to know about Hellfire. Uh, what's that? Yeah, I don't know shit about it, but that's what he wanted to know about. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, the smoke method and the steam method were the only other two that he really spent time with, uh, down where I was. Um, but they don't talk. Uh, so he was really just doing experiments on them. Trying to figure okay. out, like, how they are creatures considering they're made of, like, air. Okay. What kind of experiments was he doing? He kept, like, putting them in bottles and then, like, pushing them around. Kind of fucked up. That's coming from a devil. <laughs> Push them around. So was the bottle floating while they, while they were floating? Uh, no. 
So when he put like them a in the bottle, they fell on the ground. Yeah. Nah, he'd he'd like stick them in a bottle and then try to like use a plunger to like force them into another bottle. Didn't look fun. Mm. Now that I'm thinking about it, you know there used to be more than one pixie. Yeah, now there's only one. Hey, it's easy to forget since they're in the other room. Interesting. You never I did saw not him leave with a pixie? What? You never saw him leave with a pixie? Well, he tend to carry a lot of equipment with him whenever he'd come down. So, like, oh, so he, he might have had them. I mean, yeah. Boxes and shit. Okay. How would he keep a pixie here and take one somewhere else unless he killed one? Do you know how pixie dust works? No. Hmm. Was he putting the pixie dust on stuff and then it was flying? Not around me. So hellfire, is that something you can only get from hell? Or can you make it here? Ah... Uh... I mean, I've seen it in hell before. Never seen it on the material plane. Hmm. You know, he did he did ask me who else might have information on it. it seemed like he was trying to track down a specific spell. Um oh, I sent him that? to an Arcanoloth who goes by via Kraya in the Blood Rift. He seemed pretty happy with me the next time he came down there, but he stopped asking me questions after that. He also seemed a lot older, like 30 years older, or more. Hmm. Yeah, he was supposed to be, as far as I knew, about 30, and he seemed a lot older to me, too. Yeah, so maybe, uh, maybe Via Crea helped him out. Or the opposite. Of course, she said he was happy, so probably had to pay a price of some sort. But he's dead now, so. Hey, that's right. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. What else can you help me here with? Um, what did he? What did he do to the Eric Croca? Any idea? Yeah, once he got him down there, he wasn't all that interested with him. Um, I mean, just like me, he just uses his wings. Nothing yeah, fancy. So, what is Hellfire? Is that something that just constantly burns forever without needing something to actually burn? I don't is know. Like an infinite fuel source, is that? Or energy source? Is that why, what he was thinking? I mean, when you're on the Nine Hells and you see the Hellfire, all you know is that you're not supposed to touch it, even if you're immune. So, I just kind of stayed away from it. I don't know much other than that. Um, what was the, the guy that you sent him to, where did he find him at? I don't know. I just knew the name. Oh, okay. But, I mean, our kind of loss of those... Uh, they're like study fiends. They're like um they're like nerd fiends. Like they dig information. If you're looking for one, um really all you got to do is find a way to offer them something. They'll show up for a deal. Speaking of that, uh I've given you an awful lot of information. You got any cigarettes? Mm, do I have cigarettes? I don't think so. Um, do I have anything in my diplomat's pack? I don't know what's in your diplomat's pack. Let's see. Diplomats is a brand of uh, cigarettes. <laughs> I got a pack of diplomats. <laughs> uh, fine, whatever. Actually, no. Roll, roll a D100. Roll a D100. You need a 60 or higher. And you have a pack of diplomats. Oh my god! You got a pack of diplomats. Yeah. Hey, my man. 
<laughs> he takes he takes the whole pack and he brings one over and he lights it in the fireplace. <laughs> he just uh, and, and the thing too is he just stands in the fireplace. <laughs> is the fireplace burning? Yes. Does that fire look different than normal fire? Oh boy, here we go. Uh make a survival check. Good question. Aren't it? Right. You 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 aren't sure, so you just like stick your hand into it. No, you, you I take, don't do that. You take two points of fire damage. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> It's hot. It's regular. You just like hot. you just like pick up a burning log in your hand, and you go ah, <laughs> hey yeah, smarts don't it? Is that is that Hellfire Fest? No, no. How do you know? How can you tell the difference? I mean, it's just regular fire. What does Hellfire look like? It's a different color. Oh man, I gotta look and see. <laughs> uh, I don't think ah um hellfire is bright red almost white and uh it doesn't care about immunity to fire. Oh. Did he ever... I guess you wouldn't know. Have you seen any... You went through this castle or tower, haven't you? Or no? You've only been down here? I mean, not really, but if you saw Hellfire, you'd be like, whoa, that's a weird fire. Okay. Seems dangerous. I should probably not stick my hand in it and pick it up. Yeah. Yeah, who would do that? I'm kind of knucklehead. Well, you enjoy those cigarettes. I'm going to grab one of my friends. They might have more smarts than me. Okay. You know? All right. He was gone a long time. What's everybody else doing? Could really go for a diplomat right about now. <laughs> Captain's got those. <laughs> them all to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we search oh. every floor? No. Yeah, what do, no, what do we have left to search? Um, search everything. You have the fourth floor, the third floor, the second floor, the first floor, the basement, and the sub basement you haven't searched. Oh, okay, what's going on on the fourth floor? Yeah, well, you're on the third floor, so I'll put you back on the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't. Oh, I thought. Uh, so, Aladar and. Well, so who's the other person? Who's gonna be? Other... I'll do it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I've been rolling terrible, so. Nice. Sixteen. She's been rolling really well. Um. Yeah, all there really is to do in this room is to reiterate what you already knew. Um, so the greenery, uh, or the greenhouse is full of all different kinds of plants. Um, uh, there's some v just basic vegetables that they probably used for eating. Um, there are some exotic plants, but they're well known like Venus flytraps. Um, and this room also has sugar leaf, which is native to the Feywild. It's odd to see Feywild plants in the material plane. Uh, Jem identified enough herbs to make two poison antidotes, though she didn't make them, because I don't think anybody has a poisoner's kit. Um, you think that if you want to learn anything else about what you found in this room, you would need to research it. Can we take the sugar leaf? <clears throat> I don't think you took any, no. Can we? Sure. Hey. I didn't take any. I don't know. Is it in your inventory? I don't remember us taking anything. Yeah, I have sugar leaf. Oh, nice. I took sugar leaf, bandages, strange powder, three empty vials, a horn. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, the stuff for two. 
poison antidotes. All right. Next floor. Next floor. So who has uh Cora and who? Me. Yeah. Okay. Jemothy. Uh oh, I'm sorry, that's Mathiah. that's that's the wrong floor. I'm supposed to be on three. Whoops, my bad. Okay, so you two are gonna search floor three? Hex, yeah. <sighs> Finally. 17. Nice. Hmm. 11. Still pretty good. Um, Let's see. One thing that stumped you last time was the difference between... There's a globe and a weird globe and the orrery in the middle. Um, This is just a normal globe. Um, This one is a globe that uh, doesn't show the surface and uh, points out magical ley lines around the world. Magical ley lines? <laughs> yeah, places in the world where veins of magic run stronger than others. Mm. So it would tell us where portals are, maybe? Good. There could be anything. Magic is stronger along ley lines, especially where ley lines intersect. <laughs> that are the only things you did not figure out in searching this room. Mm, okay. Okay, library, first floor, basement, and sub-basement. If you wanted to keep searching, you don't have to do whatever you guys want. Wait, we did the library. Yeah, I thought they did do the library. Alright, first floor then. On what? Search it. Ooh, bad one. I guess what I should say is that I'm not putting a limitation on library searching. Oh. Oh, well, I haven't searched the library. I mean, you, you haven't really searched the library for anything specific yet. You've just kind of been like thumbing through random books so can i go can i go up and look well sure eladar you're searching the first floor mm -hmm. by yourself sure is the library i, I, I searched it for <clears throat> excuse me that four oh, yeah i keep doing that Teresa. stop leave me alone <laughs> Uh, you with a 19, uh, finally realize that these two paintings on the wall, um, one is Mistra, the goddess of magic, and the other one is Talos, god of storms. Um, okay. That's done. Can I compare my uh, the book I have with the strange unknown language to other books in this library? Sure. Make like, can I look? For... Check. <clears throat> what book should we be? Uh, All right. Got... Um. <clears throat> Searching around the room for books of the same language, you notice that where all the books should be regarding the nine hells, they're all missing. <clears throat> okay. And you realize that the language of the book must be some kind of hell language. Ooh, we gotta ask the hell guy. The devil. So Jem comes storming down the chairs. Hell guy! <laughs> hey, that's me! <laughs> Fez the hell guy! He's, Do you recognize he's, the he's halfway through the cigarettes already. <laughs> um, let me see if he can read. Uh, you don't know what language the book is, do you? 
He says, yeah, that's infernal. Can you read it? I don't like reading. That's not what I asked. Offer him something. He's he's not going to do it for free. Yeah, good I, point, boss. I, I don't even know if he can do it yet. <laughs> well, how are you going to get the information from him if you just tell all him? All right, I, hey, hey, I'll give you a free one, all right? That book is called Hellfire. Cool. It's pretty cool. Really, I don't have anything to give him. You want these bone dice? <laughs> nah. You Wait, want... Are those our diplomats? What the hell, Cap? <laughs> <laughs> He like he like covers them up and flies over onto a bookcase. The only place we can get those we can't go to anymore. Important is my ring of cold resistance. He might like that. Uh how important is it? I mean it's kind of rare, but like oh. when you, he sees you looking at it, he goes, Honey, I'm already resistant to cold. Okay, cool. Didn't know. Do you have use for money? Yeah, sure. I mean, in the Nine Hells, uh, the currency is souls, but uh, I can find a use for money, sure. You could buy more diplomats. Yeah. Not <laughs> the way you think. All right, <laughs> 50 gold. Okay, I can give it to him. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> How do I... I want to. I, I do want to be clear that one bronze piece is basically three dollars, which means a silver piece is thirty dollars, which means a gold piece is three hundred dollars. So he You're wants. He wants. He wants fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> so what do I do? Do I say no? You haggle. You say yeah, yes. <laughs> the guy. You really don't think you can haggle him? I'll give you. How many gold pieces did he say? 20? He said, or 50? He said 50. I'll give you... How many should I give him? One. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? You you look... Okay, so so like you're asking everybody, like, looking around, and then there's, like, all of a sudden there's a little monkey next to you, and the monkey, like, looks up at you, and he says, Off room 55! <laughs> no. How about... How about and like ten? she looks at all of you when she when you look back, Fez is there again. He goes, Yeah, trust the monkey. He knows what he's talking about. I'll give you ten. Oh man, that's uh that's not close. Uh how about forty two? How about I let you live? Hey buddy. I mean, you can't really kill an imp, you know? I mean, uh, we're on the material plane. Uh, you wipe Come me on, out, we set I just you go free. home. We set you free. I gave you an awful lot of information for a couple of cigarettes. It was a whole Talk box! <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was so <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, make a persuasion check with advantage because Eldar <laughs> is incredulously backing you up. <laughs> it's a whole box. <laughs> it's like this. This Wait, book is in Infernal. Yeah. yeah. What was it, Joey? Yeah. I read that. Oh, yeah. do you? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your cigarettes. Okay. <laughs> uh, like... Hold on. <laughs> All right, yeah. He uh, <laughs> oh, I almost got it. All right, he transforms into a rat and like puts one of the cigarettes in his mouth and has the rest of them just on his back. And he just like leaves smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Where are we? Okay. New York. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm gonna hand the book to number one. Let him read it. All right. 
Um, let's see. <laughs> that whole time you spoke the How did you never look at the book? I don't know. You son of a bitch. <laughs> then I was just having fun listening, so I didn't want to say it. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, so... I was just sitting there watching us cross legged. <laughs> so... almost gave him fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> so hellfire is a specific type of magic fire. Um, it can only be created by magic or a fiendish ability, and is difficult to extinguish. Whatever is burned by hellfire does not burn away. Instead, it burns continuously until it is extinguished. This causes pain in creatures and eats away at the properties of objects. It glows bright red, almost white, and while it could burn as hot as 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, its heat doesn't quite work the same as normal fire. Only the burning object or creature feels the heat. The creature that is subjected to hellfire suffers one level of exhaustion, which can only be removed by removal of the hellfire. The creature also takes 1d6 fire damage every hour per 1 inch circumference of hellfire. The, oh, and it's not fire damage. The damage has no type, as the hellfire eats away at its very existence. However, hellfire cannot drop a creature below 1 hit point, and does no damage to a creature that has 0 hit points. A magic object that is subjected to hellfire will slowly have its magic property stripped away at a rate in the discretion of the DM based on the size of the hellfire and the power of, the power of the object. Magic protections on the object will work, but only until the hellfire burns them away. Eventually the magic object will become a mundane object. Mundane objects subjected to hellfire slowly have the properties of their existence stripped away at a rate of the discretion of the DM based on the size of the hellfire and the durability of the object. Colors fade. Density dissipates until pieces crumble to dust, almost as if the object were aging at a hastened rate. Unless the object completely dissolves and is no more, at which point the hellfire subsides. Since it is not technically fire, immunity to fire is irrelevant, meaning that hellfire can work as a punishment for devils and fiends who are immune to regular fire. Hellfire is immune to all forms of magic except create, destroy hellfire, dispel magic cast at 8th level or higher, or the wish spell. In the DM's discretion, the hellfire could be extinguished or the target of the hellfire could be altered, although the use of, through the use of a spell, 8th level or higher. Uh, one piece of more of information I don't know if it says there yeah hellfire's main limitation is in how it spreads the amount of hellfire that can be created depends directly on the amount of energy used to create it the only way it would spread is if you use too much power to create hellfire meaning that you create hellfire on an object or creature but of a size that is bigger than the object or creature in that case the hellfire would spread to whatever the object or creature touches until it was spread out enough Meaning that if you cast it on an object, if you used exactly the right amount, it can't spread. Because it can only work on exactly the amount that you use it on. Um, mm -hmm. So the fire itself doesn't spread. So if you cast it on somebody, they can't like touch somebody else and they'll catch fire too. It just burns away at that person until it's either dissipated or it destroys them. I'm leaving. <laughs> huh? Sounded like an in. This shit, I'm out. <laughs> so, if somebody cast Hellfire on you, you would need either the spell Create Destroy Hellfire to get rid of it, or to spell Magic cast at 8th level. Interesting. Otherwise, you can't get rid of it. So, if somebody cast that on you, you're fucked. Hmm. It doesn't explain why the wizard got old after he came back from the fiend. It does. It does explain why he got old. Um. Oh, degrees of their existence stripped away. No, the the casting, the casting of Hellfire in the first place. Hold on. Um. Oh, I see. Aging at a hastened rate. Right, you are you are expending your own life. Um, does it say, does it say that here? I don't know if you were supposed to get that someplace else or not, but I can. I'll just say that 
you figure that out. The when you use your magic to create Hellfire, you spend part of your life to create it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I know that's so a long. I know that's a long explanation. A fire. Yeah, I know all of that's a long explanation, but the the bullet point is that when it's created, it only burns what it's created to burn, unless you either accidentally or purposely created too much so that when it touched something, it would spread. The heat doesn't hurt anyone except the thing it was cast on. Getting rid of it is really difficult, and both creating it and getting rid of it co co will cost you to spend part of your life. So maybe he somehow used Hellfire and is to make that ship fly? Yeah, because it doesn't ever distinguish or just extinguish. So, could he be could he possibly be using as the fuel for target? Say that again, you're hard to hear. Like, what could he possibly be using as like the fuel for the Hellfire, then, like, what would he have cast it on? I don't think he needs fuel, does he? Well, it's it's got to be cast on something, doesn't it? Or did I misunderstand that? I guess an object or a creature. Yeah, and so it, it it slowly destroys the object that it's been cast on. So, what would last long enough to be worth years of his life? Would it just be like on a water source of some sort? But then it would be a finite water source unless it was regularly filled or. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, because if he cast it on like a boiler, it, doesn't, it seems the way it works, it wouldn't actually heat the water. Right. Because it's only the object feels the heat. So it would have to be on water. <clears throat> well then the fire and water combination would make that creature steam mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. it would make the creature but it would I don't know what the... yeah, I don't know I thought that's what it does I don't think he was just light water on fire it creates a method that's what you're <clears throat> yeah it says the combination of fire and water creates a creature made of air I don't think that we could just put fire and water in that, that. That is the combination of the plane of water and the plane of fire. Not just not any fire and water. Um, you guys aren't like this is this is fantasy engineering. So, like, you guys will never figure out what's in my brain for how the hellfire is supposed to work. So what I want you guys to do is to just make an intelligence check to see if any of you have a hint by combining that book with the uh, schematics that you found to see if there's something you know. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the schematics. I about the schematics, too. Oh, I rolled the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. You rolled a natural 20, Jim. It doesn't Later. matter that you rolled the wrong thing. Um, Jim, you... <coughs> you... In thinking about all of this, understand that if he's using, like, for, forgetting everything about the Fey and the Elementals, if he is using this Hellfire for something, he must be using it for some kind of thrust. He must be using it somehow to cause some kind of thrust, because there can't be any other use for it. If you're trying to make something fly, you either want to push it, like on the sail of a ship, and it uses the wind to push the ship, or use magic to make like something float. And Hellfire seems more like the pushing type thing, but the problem was that nothing else feels the heat. So how can it push? The, there's, there's two hints 
in this in this section of book that's highlighted that that make you think maybe you understand how it works to push the ship it says you it is possible to cast too much hellfire on something so that if it touched something else it would spread if you're going to have that on the ship you want to make sure whatever you're casting it on doesn't touch anything else but if you could cast too much of it on something and you formatted that somehow in the ship maybe that would cause it to push but how do you get things to not touch each other in a ship that's flying That's everything that you figured out. Mm. The schematics, there's the propeller controls and the thruster controls with the thrusters. So it's safe to assume he the ship probably uses both Hellfire and Pixie Dust, right? Probably, yeah. Uh... Especially yeah. since he took the time to grab that last bag before he was getting away. Well, it'd be just for the motorcycle. <clears throat> well, yeah. Are you guys all looking at the schematics? I've gotten no. up, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like you're missing something if you have them open. I don't have them open. Okay, then you're not missing anything. <laughs> oh, I found it. Continuous forward propulsion from two magic sport sources. Oh. Check the boards and oh, con dust. constructed with boards infused <laughs> with pixie dust, <laughs> enabling perpetual flight. Okay, well there you go. <laughs> Continuous forward propulsion with two magic sources, that's the hellfire. And something else. Yeah, two magic sources, so I'll have hellfire and something else. We have two of the clues. Anyway, that's what I wanted you to find. There, there's plenty of other um, hints on this thing, but those are the two things I wanted you to see, those bullet points. Methods, maybe? The fire and water method, maybe? Yeah, it could be. I mean, does understanding how the ship works help us get there? Probably not. No, but taking it down, maybe. Yeah. The, the extinguishing the Hellfire. What would, what would we need to extinguish it? Just water? No, I, I think you got to use a spell or something. Like oh, yeah. Yeah, which is yeah. Imp basically impossible. So, high. But if we could, but like, Knock it out of there. I say, also, it would dissipate we'll if fire. its fuel source was, you know, if whatever it was on fire was destroyed completely. Yeah. It would well, spread. In terms of yeah. casting the spell being impossible, remember, he originally couldn't cast the spell either. True. Yeah. Go to the fiend and 
have him teach us something? I don't know. Yeah, uh, let's yeah, let's keep going down uh in the tower here. We haven't talked to everybody yet still. Yeah, talk to the lady. Do we can we get into the sub basement now? Did we find the way to get down there? Or was that like a word spell or something, right? Well you went down to the sub basement, that's where you found Fuzz. Yeah, that but we didn't get to go in that other section, like where it the was, was. Another there was another colored door. But it looked different. Yeah, we needed hard. we needed a magical word, an elvish word. I don't think we found anyone that knew it. I just want to say that my my biggest concern at this part was that you guys would get bored with all of the crazy scientifically fantasy lore stuff I came up with. So seriously, if there's any part of this that's boring to you, just forget about it. That there are dozens of plans you could come up with to both get to the ship and to attack it. So do whatever you want. If a part of it's like, well, that's complicated. Don't care about that. Then just forget it. That's all I have to say. Yeah, we also. So I I know. Uh, I've got three level three spells, and I can learn fly. So I could have three of us flying. We've got the broom, and then I don't know if the cycle works. So Even possibly we could. Rug. There's but a rug. Figure out... Oh, we figured out the rug, yeah. Study it at some point. Yeah. And so if that. we could get, get close to it, we might be able to just, the five of us, get there. So another spell I was looking at that I could get. Crap, where to go? Um, it's called Pass Without Trace, so it's a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity, stealth checks, and can't be tracked except by magical means. The creature that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or other traces of its passage. So that could be useful. Yeah. Do you know that spell or something you can learn? I can trade it. I was looking at this one. I can trade it out. We have to take a long rest. I could trade it out with another one that I have that I don't use. Okay. Yeah, that might be good to know so we don't get shot down from cannons or they just speed up and fly away. Yeah. Yeah, if we, if we can locate it and then try to infiltrate it at night and take out its propulsion systems. Yeah, nighttime. So it cool. lasts for one hour. I think fly lasts for an hour too. Looking at the we, schematics, it looks like we can enter through the propeller shafts, possibly. This has with external access. Yeah, that flies ten minutes. Flies not that long, so. And we don't even know where the ship is, do we? No, we'd have to locate it. Well, you, I mean, we've got to do guys, that one way or the other. If you guys start looking, though, it's they don't hide where it is, so it'd be easy to find where wherever it is. Okay. So there was nothing. Hi. None of his research on pixie dust anywhere, right? That we found. Research on pixie dust. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, if you if they put it on the ship, do they have to keep replenishing the pixie dust, or does it is it like a permanent? Once you put it on something, you haven't found anything that would answer that. But the book on the Feywild told you that he he was surprised on how it worked with pixies that their wings didn't really matter, and the spell magic wouldn't stop them from flying, and that they could apparently just float around perpetually without ever having to stop. You don't know if, because they produce their own pixie dust, if that means it has to be re-put into the ship or not, or if once the boards were infused it lasts forever, you don't know. Is the the back doors on the ship, Are is that what the plank lever's for? Uh, well, <laughs> answering right. that. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, no, never mind. It shows the plank there. 
I think it's just a door that opens to drop people to their death. Yeah. But... And the lavatory drops into. Yeah, we could just. If that seems to be. Oh, maybe we can fly up through there. Yeah, you can go that way. I'll take. I'll Dips. Dips <laughs> some dude right in the ass. Dips in the shitter. You guys look look around. And Cora's gone. She's already in that toilet. Oh, no. <laughs> Cut to Cora on the ship already in the toilet. Where is everyone? <laughs> Figured out the teleportation circle. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw a toilet I could climb in. I went for it. <laughs> yeah, it shows. It shows an hour ago. Cora saw lavatory on the on the blueprints, went running up the stairs, <laughs> use a teleportation <laughs> circle. <laughs> so funny. Another thing I noticed on these uh, schematics is they have long boats. So does that mean they have flying long boats as well? It says they can land in the sea too. So you think they're just Yeah. Yeah. Could go either way. They're also using Hellfire on their long boats. Uh, they might have them infused with pixie dust, though. Yeah, maybe like that motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. I will say at this point, between talking to Fez and looking at all this stuff, that he would say, "Oh, that that pouch you got—that's that's not pixie dust. I don't know what that is." Hmm. I thought Fez was gone. You look, and uh, there's a spider on top of Jem's head <laughs> with a cigarette in its mouth. <laughs> hmm. Not uh, pixie dust, huh? What do you think it is? Um, can I do an arcana check on it? Cocaine. She did. Co um, you would need to spend an hour... Uh, fucking yeah. around with it. All right. Really, I mean, you can do that if any if anybody has any ability to learn identify. It will become very easy to find out what that thing does. I think I do. Yeah, no right. one knows it. But if you want to spend an hour fucking around with it to see if you can figure it out, go ahead. I want to identify. Bug. Okay, Scully, make an arcana check. Would you? What? Uh, yeah, you try to, like, do all kinds of shit with it, and you can't get it to do anything. You think, maybe it's just a rug. Damn it. This rug is just a rug. What's in a rug? Jim, use this rug to fly. Oh. Do she it. Tosses it at her and it wraps around her head. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at the dust? Do you have... A, well, I was seeing if I could learn the identify spell, but... I, do don't, I don't think we... I think it's just wizards and bards and not some other specific things. Joey? I don't. What? Yeah, I'll spend an hour on it. Can, can I take out the powder that I have in my pack and compare it? What, what powder that you have? I picked up powder from the closet that one time. It says, I think I put it in as strange powder. Well, I don't know what that is, so. Oh. Was it in it was in the closet where they we found the, the boot boots. closet. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, there was nothing special about any of that. Oh, that one cocaine. Then. <laughs> Here, try it. Try rat feces. Uh, so what'd you do, Eldar? You spend pretended. You pretended to spend an hour on it again. Yeah. Keep saying you're gonna. <laughs> well, what do I do? I got uh, something. What do I do? I kind of check. No. Oh my wow. 
god. Noise. What the I did, fuck? I wrote, I wrote good on stuff that I think is stupid. That wasn't supposed to be that easy. Shit. Um. We're on initial 20. Yeah. Okay, how does he figure this out? Not only don't I know what it is, but I can make more of it. All right. All right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, so Eladar is like sprinkling this like on his boots and like he gets like this bright idea and he goes in the bathroom and he puts a little bit on his penis. Nothing happens. <laughs> um, he's like thinking and thinking and thinking. And then he remembers <laughs> and like one of the closets, there was like a tricycle. So he like grabs the tricycle and he just goes outside and uh, like I'll say Fez follows you out as a spider. So he's outside and Aladar is outside and the arrow croaker is just like sitting there like <laughs> and uh, you you put a little bit of the dust on this tricycle and like sit on it and then the arrow croaker just like pushes you. And you start to, like, roll down the stairs, dunk, 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 and all of a sudden you just, like, take off into the sky on this tricycle. <laughs> and you're, you're flying around like the kid in E.T. It happens. On this tricycle. <laughs> and um, as the wheel starts to slow down, you start to sink, so you start to pedal. And pedaling the tricycle, even though all it's doing is moving the wheels, actually keeps you flying around. So you're just oh, outside God. flying around on this tricycle. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering splendor. The bird's like flying next to you, <laughs> the air crocro. <laughs> Tell me, crocro, now when did you last let your heart? <laughs> let your heart do what? Decide. <laughs> 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 I want to fly by the window where these guys can see me. Yeah, you guys just see Eldar. <laughs> Second. <the> world. <laughs> and Get he's it. got the arrow crow crow flying next to him along with a crow with a cigarette in its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They're just kind of flying in formation around. <laughs> what did he do? Unbelievable sight. <laughs> no, he looks around and he's flying over the ocean now <laughs> <laughs> oh shit oh, God. starting to look tired from pedaling you were on an <laughs> island you look down you're over a desert <laughs> what did I do got so swept up in the close your eyes <laughs> Alright, so what you have determined is that this cloud powder, when sprinkled on a vehicle that is no larger than 75 feet in any dimension, once spr sprinkled, the vehicle gains the ability to fly for 24 hours. However, its flight is a function of its forward movement. For every foot the vehicle moves forward, it may also move up one foot or down one foot. If the vehicle is in the air when the powder expire expires, it floats toward the ground in the same manner as the feather fall spell. Nice. How much did you have to sprinkle? He's got to, you got to coat it. Okay. Which means for your ship, you would have one dose. Ooh. Ooh, so we can fly our ship up with it. You fly your ship up. Nice. Do that. that. I mean, this was oh, supposed to be hard to figure out. He doesn't really have any notes laying around on this. And without the identify spell, like figuring it out was just going to be dumb luck. Um, natural twenty. I mean, without identify, <laughs> natural twenty was going to be the only way to do it. Nice. Yeah, oh, dude. All right. So I guess uh, I rolled good when it counts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we know how to get up there with our ship. Do you want to bother capturing a pixie? Otherwise, it'll just die down there. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we can get in that secondary room still, but we'd have to figure it out, right? Wait, why would we capture a pixie? Well, I mean, all those creatures in the basement are just gonna die, right? Probably. So we Who should cares? release them all. But didn't on the world? <laughs> 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 on the world? 
Come on, guys. I still don't understand. Why would we capture a pixie? Sell it. I've always wanted a pet pixie. Use its pixie dust. We can enslave and sell all those creatures. Maybe it'll grant us a wish. I don't know. What do pixies do? They just try to live the best life, Cap. Let them go if you want. It's not I very mean, piratey. It's not very piratey. You're th you're a druid. What's not piratey? This Releasing is... dangerous animals on the world. Yeah, well, that's that's, it. that's true. But I let's go. Pirate, but I am anti-slavery <laughs> or encagement. Imprisonment. Encagement. <laughs> what are we going to get in return, though? I want to get wanna... something. Right, well, I'm not doing it for you, okay? Let's go let him out. Frick yeah. We don't know how to let him out. Yeah, there was levers or something, wasn't there? Oh, I can get him out. Yeah. Oh. Elvish. You know some oh. elvish word or something. No. To let all those creatures out? We needed no, to get to the next room. We can let all the other creatures out now. Alright, well you guys go down to the basement. Let's so research all the other floors now. Are we gonna rest it all before we Make unleash we all these creatures or Lady Go? Yeah, we'll do a resting before Jeez. we no. we'll tie screw her. Castle. Oh, do we let her go? Yeah, should we just let her go? Uh she can clean the ship. She can work for us now. <gasps> we have a wench. We have a wench. If she agrees to it. Wenches don't agree to things. Yeah, right? you say this like she has a choice, Captain. Well, Alandar just said he doesn't like slaves. And now you want to get a slave? I don't like it when other people <laughs> enslave things, but I want to do it myself. Jesus Christ. God. Unless I can have one. Oh, <laughs> 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 I think we're Either spending I too much time on this. Let's just make a decision and um, we can let her leave. How about she can do what she wants? If she wants to come with us, she can come. If not, then she's free to go. How about that? You want to be my wench? You go in and you realize you've left her down here for like six and a half hours tied up, and she is currently trying to drink her own tears. Oh, give her Say some water. I laugh. <laughs> Right, water. Well, you give her some water and she just cries. Alright, well, untie her. She could go tell on us. What? So, what's the option? Leave her here to I die? I said we can let her go when we leave. Okay, so. Fight all those robots? I mean, she's kind of a weakling. What do you think she's going to do if we untie her? Go tell them that we just killed their master? Not if we tell her she can't leave. I want to ask her if she likes working here or if she likes it here. Do you like it here? She just like starts coughing because she was so thirsty. Um, it's just six hours. Jesus Christ. <laughs> she says, uh, <laughs> giving her a hard time. <laughs> uh, what a baby. <laughs> she says, well, it, it was a pretty good job. Uh, oh. what are you asking me? Well, there's no work here anymore. So, you got two options. One, you can come with us, work with us on our ship. Or two, you can stay tied up here until we're ready to leave, and then we'll let you go. I want the second one, please. All right. Hopefully Drink those robots now. aren't we'll evil and another six hours. kill you. <laughs> I look at Eladar and then look at my axe, and then look at Eladar and then look at my axe. What are you going to do with your axe? I whisper to the captain. Cap, I don't know if she's a threat, but if you use a feeling like a chopping, then that's your prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I concede. I'll let her live. <laughs> right. Okay, are we long resting? Yeah, let's do a long rest quick. Sure. Um, you guys can like sleep in the beds and stuff. Um, yeah, take a long rest. So get your hit points back, your spell slots back. 
Right. Whatever features you've used can replenish. We're level nine now, right? No. Ten? Uh, yeah, ten. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's ten. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, wench. Gold? Are you offering her gold? I said, is she cold? Oh. I'm, Jack, I'm not doing this. <laughs> is there any is there beer down here? Can we drink beer and stuff? Uh there's a whole bunch of wine. Yeah, I drink a lot of wine. Alright. It's when I switch out my spell. Yep. How do I do that? Um, <clears throat> what are you getting? I'll just do it. What are you getting rid of? And... Uh, healing spirit. Okay. And I'm gonna add pass without trace. Okay. Done. And a switch and fly for haste. What's the language of that book that we read? Infernal? Infernal. Okay. Okay. I think I'm done. Everybody good? Um, did anyone change spells? I changed one of mine. Yeah, me too. What you guys changed to, or do you not want to say? Um, I I added that pass without trace spell, so we can be undetectable if we want. Mm -hmm. I took off haste and put on fly. Does anyone have? Um, the teleportation spell ability, a chance, like a uh, access to it anyway. I did not. I didn't see anything so. like that. No. Or identify. Nope. Teleport's a 7th level spell. It is Sorcerer's, but 7th level, so... Damn. I think you got to level 12 or 13 for that. 13, probably. Yeah. My wizard's level 12, and I don't know level 7 spells yet. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> yeah. I'm good. I know. I'm good. All right. I'm good. Thanks. Can we go in the sub basement and check it out, or do we not want to bother with that now? I don't care either way. Yeah, I want to free those animals or monsters. Yeah. I'll give them the keys. Let's get it. Okay, so you guys go down? Yep. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Sure. You guys are disgusting. I was going down. Oh, oh jeez. Always go down. Alright. You guys are downstairs. 
Why not open the gates? Which one? Please. Um. Let's see. What do we got in here again? That one in the north looked pretty dangerous, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and you look and you see that the specter inside the little yellow dome is just like, <laughs> like just freaking out. That one, Eladar. Someone else will take care of him. I'm sure. You know what I mean? Him? Do you want to? Feed him? I don't think he needs food or anything, so he'll probably just chill down here. I mean. You're the boss, man. I'm not. I don't have a super strong feeling either way about him. <laughs> I uh, no. I feel like most of these things might end up just attacking us. To be fair, they're not the smartest things. Yeah, neither are we. I'm pretty sure that's what Fez said it before when we asked him. He said. He said they should. might attack us. What What was the thing to the south here? Or these things? Oh, the ones the. Uh... Can any of us speak to any of them? Like, do they understand the language that we know? Oh, well, tell me, all. tell me what languages you'd want to speak. I would try every language that I know. All right, you try them all, and language. whether or not they understand you depends on which languages you speak. Common and well, one primal. At a time. All right, he does one at a time, and depending on which languages he knows, <laughs> creatures either understand him or don't. Do they respond? Uh, yeah, they each speak in the languages that they know, and you either understand them or you don't, depending on whether or not you understand those languages. Yeah, I get how listening works. All right, so do you guys talk? Co yes, common infernal primordial. I try to talk to them. Say anything? Like, do you say the words, or you just? I just said, do you understand I... me yeah. in each of those languages? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out still if Jack thinks that I memorize all the languages that you guys know or not. Well, I just said all the ones that I know. So he is joking, maybe? I'm I so confused. I'm confused. What language does your character know? Joe doesn't know what your character knows. Yeah, I literally just said common, elvish, and primordial. When the hell did you say that? I'm pretty sure I just said that. <laughs> I only remember Rob saying it, but Okay, none of them like speak common. I immediately started saying it. Okay. Uh, Elvish, Primordial, no. The... Infernal? Infernal, no. Nope. No, no. I'm sure we tried this before and only the imp spoke. Alright, I guess if, uh... I guess if we can't talk to him. I mean, these these two down here don't look so dangerous, right? Eladar is just over shouting in Elvish at a snake. Do you <laughs> understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> I'm tired of all these snakes. I'm <laughs> motherfucking plane. Are these ones to the south <laughs> aggressive at all? Or what are they doing? Um... No, nah, just kind of walking around, floating around aimlessly. Or yeah, let, let them out. Yeah, I want to open up one of those. Which one? Um, well, which one were you just talking about? Two to the south. That one, not one in particular. All right. Uh... I think the box okay. is dangerous. That one? All right. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Okay. So the the fairy dragon, um, you open up his cage and he's just gonna fly past all of you and try to get out. Do you stop him? Nope. Let him go. All right. He's out. Uh, up upstairs, you hear faintly, "Hey, watch it." <laughs> and what's this, this other one in here? Steal a cigarette. <clears throat> let him out. Okay. You let the flying snake out and he just takes off. Mm -hmm. Gone.
Left it next. Boxy Brown. What's Boxy Brown look like? Aggressive right now? Um, no. He is, um, sorting all the stones in his cell according to shape and size. Hmm. I'm just ignoring you. What's that, Cap? I don't. I don't think we let that one out. <laughs> but or like a golem. Then. Okay. What about the other two? I let out this method. Smoke method. Is that the ones of the southeast? Right yeah, southeast. I think that's the only other one we would let out. Yeah. All right. Open the cage. Okay. Let yep. Go. You let him out, and he just. Whoo! flies out. Mm. Why not this one? Other one to the south? Um, uh, we can if you want. I, I thought I, I thought that one was particularly... I'm going to let him out. Dangerous. All right, <laughs> the cube robot creature takes off and leaves. You know, we're, we're having pretty good luck here, guys. I say we let this last guy out. <laughs> so, I'll, go, I'll go outside and you can do that. I mean, he just wants to be let out. Just a language barrier, I think. What is he? Back some kind of ghost. He's probably gonna like take our body or something. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we can let him do? go into the carpet. Hmm. <laughs> I go put the carpet on the floor. <laughs> okay. Go in. It's your new home. I want to back away a little bit. It, it here. can't get out of the dome. Dome release. Anybody know? Is it that green energy? Green stone or something? Um, Just tell like me what you cool. do. What color is the dome? We well, want to let him out. It's like this gold dome, and it appears to be emanating from whatever's drawn on the floor there. Oh, so it's a magic. So we would have to do like a dispel magic on the um, dome. I'm gonna hold up the rug in front of me and then rub the drawing a little bit to try to ruin the. What rub the, the drawing hell? with what? With your foot? Like wipe the pattern, um, with the rug. With the rug. Like I'm wiping it. Not what I meant to do. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um. When you wipe at the uh, the drawing on the ground, the specter suddenly lurches at you, um, and uh, it grabs you. You take eight necrotic damage. Make a Constitution saving throw. Uh, you pass. Um, and then it just starts like kind of darting side to side in the room. Go on the rug, and I try to hit it with the rug. All right. God. Uh, make make a weapon attack. I'm sure you're proficient with rugs. Um. Okay, so that's gonna be a fifteen. <laughs> Why are you attacking it? Uh, so that hits. <laughs> Roll a d4. What if... What's your strength? Four. Alright, so that's five points of bludgeoning damage. Um, And it is resistant from non-magical bludgeoning. So he takes five points of bludgeoning damage and then attacks you again. I want to shoot him. That's a miss. I can do that. Sure, go ahead. Hold on, I got the wrong sheet up here. Uh, da, 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 da. What the hell did I do with my sheet? Sorry. God damn it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it takes 13 fire damage. Starting to look like it's fading. 
Um, <clears throat> possess this rug before you fade away. The wand of binding link a monster to an object. Is that what that does or no? I don't remember what it does. Uh, Mrs. Uh, no. It's not what it does. Oh, it just holds the monster. Okay. Yeah. I guess I'm sick of this specter, so I'm just going to great X him. Okay. That's the spirit. All right, you just, like, whip your great axe into the wall. And it just completely misses, and then it attacks you again. <laughs> yes. can, I, can I shoot yeah. it again? I'll, sure. I, want to try yeah. so. I just want to keep shooting it at this point. All right, yeah, you blast it, and it dies. <laughs> Go grab my axe. <laughs> I yell, I told you! Well, you didn't have to hit it with the rug. What are you going to do with it? It was just darting around in here. Can we just leave? I mean, yeah. the specters are pretty evil. Huh? But... It's attacking you guys. It didn't attack until he started grabbing at its dick. He freed it and it attacked him. It was scared. What are, we, what are we doing about this pink door? Are we trying to go through or no? I would like to. We've done all this. Might as well. Yeah. Open okay. it. see what's behind it. You gotta open it in Elvish, according to what's his face. Says. What's where's that Elvish book? Elvish book. Elvish. Someone did a gem have it? No, oh, I gave it to someone else who spoke Elvish. Wait, which one was in I Elvish? I thought that was Infernal. That was the Infernal book. No, oh. Infernal was one I didn't know. The Elvish one. Eladar, you might have that. Which one? What was the name of it? Um, was it the Fae one? It was a long... Yeah. Phenomenon of the Fae Bar? Well, it's yeah. probably not in there, but we can try words from it. Yeah, uh, see if there's any um door codes in there. Can I look through the book and see if there's any notes or anything in it? Which book? The Feywild book. That's the one in Elvish, correct? Phenomenon of the Feywild. Okay. How long do you want to spend looking okay. through the book to see if there's a code hidden someplace uh, in it? Ten minutes. Okay. What's in what's Eladar's intelligence? Uh, even. Right? Wait, intelligence? Okay. Yeah. Zero. Ten minutes. Oh. Okay. You read the first ten pages and don't find the code written. Say like open and fly and pixie and stuff like that. Yeah, can I just try random words? In sure, what words do you try? Open. Nothing happens. Dispel. Nothing happens. Purple. <gasps> Nothing happens. <laughs> I'm, this isn't gonna work. Um. Lavase las manos. Nothing happens. Well, and we didn't find anything anywhere that would talk about the store, right? I'm going to tell you this was something you were supposed to interrogate out of somebody, and you've killed everybody who knows it. <laughs> uh, I want to say prison. Nothing happens. Jail. Okay, stop it. Secret. Secret. <laughs> Any, like, writings or anything on it aside from the elvish word or whatever? There's no writing on it at all. You guys haven't tried touching it yet. Okay, Maybe I'm gonna touch it. Out there. Okay, make a constitution saving throw. Are you trying to kill me on purpose? I'm trying to kill all of you. <laughs> um okay. You're gonna take half damage. Only forty damage. You take two fire damage touching it, but your hand passes through it. 
Caliente. So minus two, is that what you said? Yeah. Two fire damage. Oh, there right. you go. You just go right through there. Wait. Do you want me to walk right through? I feel like we're going to take damage if we do that. No, I'm, I'm not interested in this at all. Neither. Because I'm a pirate, and I don't want to take damage to free some stupid creatures I don't care about. Nope, I've been burned, and I've learned my lesson. I want an Elder's Blast. I like animals, little druid. Okay, make an attack roll. Alright, you shoot the barrier, and your Elder's Blast just goes right through it. No, oh, it's not really there, guys. It's just an illusion? Okay. It's just fire. What? It'll hurt you. You don't know that. Can we, can yes, we I see do. I just touched it. Fine, right, Ladar, let's go through. All right, right behind you, Cap. All right, I try to walk through. All right, make a constitution saving throw. Okay. You take one fire damage, and you walk through it. I follow suit. A constitution saving throw. I rolled three ones on d4s. Holy shit, this room is awesome. Oh my god. Eldar, you take seven fire damage because you're a weakling. Look at this place, Eldar. Look at this place. Shit. How'd they get the no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You can, um, so, in... <laughs> just turned you gay when you walk through get there. The PS4? <laughs> um, <laughs> there are two glowing glyphs on the floor. There is a um, nearly invisible barrier that... Can you guys see that blue line? Yeah, I'm standing yeah. on it. Yeah, that it's a barrier that you can't pass through. It's connecting the two, the two glyphs to the corners of the doors to the north and south. Um, let me see here. Okay, so Scully, you do you walk up to it? What do you try to do? Um, yeah, I guess I'll look up to it and examine it before I touch it. How do you? It's a, just a near translucent barrier. Uh, I'll poke it with my axe. Okay. Uh, with what? With your ass? The great axe. <laughs> I magic yeah. great axe. Okay, your great axe goes right through it. Can I? Can the pixie hear me? Uh, pixie, can you hear me? Little pixie. Uh... The pixie. Just looks at you and tilts its head to the side. Um, Haladar, what language do you think a pixie would speak? Uh, I would start with common. I think that I just did. Yeah, and she acknowledged your voice at least, so. I don't think she would reply in something in the same language as me if she knew what I was saying. Well, possibly, but maybe she just doesn't know or trust you. The so pixie was... says, Suluman lula bulu lula mula 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 It's probably Faye, I guess. Or Elvish. Try Elvish. Maybe Elvish is similar to Faye. I say, what's your name in Elvish? Okay, which, um... <laughs> a funny thing that like English to Elvis that translates to I have a huge ass crack. So say that. I have a huge ass crack. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Elvish and Elvish is not this language. All right, I guess I'll uh, see if she knows primordial. She does not. Oh. Um. Same thing to the other pixie. What other Same. pixie? Who are you talking to? Isn't there one in the <laughs> south? Of, what is that? Oh, no, it's not a pixie. <laughs> I was looking at the so thing in the south. What creature do you think was a pixie in here? <laughs> oh, like like sitting look back? Uh, sitting back? that It just looked like a pixie with like a big flowy dress on. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure you guys can see. <laughs> All right. 
You see, there are five creatures between these two rooms. One is obviously a pixie. The other one is obviously a pegasus. Yeah, I saw the um, pegasus for sure. But the one at the, to the, the south, south, to the south, it looks like a flying, like, squid. Yeah, when I'm when I get close to it, I can tell it's and then it squid like the the other one down the big one there is just like this ten foot balloon with an eyeball I didn't even see that one just kind of floating there and then the thing at the bottom is basically a frisbee with two eye stalks a mouth on top and a whole bunch of weird pointy tentacles basically the south room here is the fucked up room (laughs) see I thought it was just three things South room. So yeah, no. You get the Pegasus and uh, Pixie free. Um, we tried all the languages. Um, I doubt it speaks. So do I? Can I tell what this barrier is? Make our kind of check. While you guys are talking, though, the Pegasus goes <laughs> and like paws at the ground. Aww, let him out. Pulls. He, it pulls at its chains. I want to let him out. So bad. He's so cute. Look at him. Uh, hi, Captain. You. you think that the barrier is caused by the uh, runes on the floor? Step on the runes, and I scrape at them. Nothing happens. You haven't tried touching the barrier other than your axe, right? Correct. Axe, yeah. Okay, and the axe went through it. Correct. So you said. Okay. Um, I'll touch it. With hand. Your hand um, goes through it. Oh. So is so there's the barrier, and then there's a is there a door we have to open as well? Yeah, I'm assuming you guys brought the keys with you. Yeah, of course, they did. Keys, I think. Um, yeah. the other thing in this room, I forgot. There's something else to point out. Um. Let me find it. Um, on the wall there in between the two doors, there's a hook with a raincoat. Um, I'm going to yeah. take the raincoat. Hey, do you touch the barrier? Oh, it's past the barrier? Uh-huh. It's, on the, Sorry, I didn't it's mean between the two part. doors. Oh, okay. Where else do you think I meant? I thought you meant like where I'm standing. I'm, I'm oh, okay. All right. Things. All right. I, th- that's reasonable. <laughs> I'm used to you only saying things that aren't reasonable. So. <laughs> so Scully put his hand through. Aladar doesn't try to touch it. So your hand went through with no issue? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, can you just walk through it? I try to just walk through it. Scully walks through it. Hmm, must only be for the magical creature. You think I'm a magical creature? No, like it keeps, like magical creatures can't pass through it. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, can I pick up the runes? Or. What? Drawn? Or the, oh, they're just drawn? Yes. But, like, uh... While the other ones looked like yellow chalk, you can't tell. What's causing these ones to be glowing on the floor? Try smashing it with my axe. Sure. Put the try putting the rug over it. Just cover it. I cover the runes with my rug. Uh, okay, you do that. The wall doesn't go away though. That was worth a shot. Yeah, I pick the the rug back up. Um. Are runes considered magic? Do you want to try the keys yes. on the door first before we just go smashing runes? Uh, sure. Jeez. Well, can they... Well, I hate to open it and then they just run through this barrier and die. I mean, I assume they can see it like us, but maybe they can't. Well, we don't have any way of talking to them unless you show them the Fey book. Does... So. Wait, I want to... Shout! Can they hear me on the other side of the barrier? Not our 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 companions. Then? Yes. 
Uh, do you, any of you guys know how to speak to fix it? Piff, bleh, 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 bleh. <clears throat> do any of you know how to speak the language of the pixies? Nope. Don't think so. Would you try with them? Common, elvish, and primordial? Yeah. I don't think they speak infernal. I'll, I'll yell in infernal. Anyone understand me in there? Uh... Pixie. When you do that, the Pegasus looks all pissed off. Whoa, 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 whoa. He, this, he's just trying to talk. It's all right. Who, who understood me? A yell. Well, the Pegasus looks, looks at you, Kelly, when you say that, and goes, I can get you out, Mr. Pegasus. Did There's you guys Pegasus. try Druidic? Druidic? Uh, I, th I, think, I think Pegasus understands common, but they just don't speak. I don't yeah. think they speak. That's the problem, but I think the pixie can speak. She's just not doing it. Did she you says, guys try it? Yeah, she can speak that, whatever that is. But I don't God, know. it's such a sexy <laughs> language. Does anybody understand what she just said? Um, no. Does anybody understand Sylvan? No. Okay, then no. None of you can understand her. I want to dispel magic on the ruins. Okay. Um... You're a warlock, so that's automatically level three, right? Yes, I think so. Okay, yeah, that works. The wall turns Ooh. off. Okay, I'll try the key on this gate. Okay. The north. Okay, you open it up. Um, what does the pixie do? Not that. I see. Pixie just sits on your shoulder. Oops. I want to unchain the Pegasus. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're to unchain the Pegasus. Okay. Yeah, you guys go in there to unchain the Pegasus. The Pegasus. When Aladar gets close, the Pegasus backs away. I put my hands up. Whoa! And I, I look underneath it to see if it's going to wang. Uh, roll a d2. You a human, Eldar? Warlock? No. <laughs> That's your class. What is your race? It does oh. not have a wang. Easy, girl. <laughs> uh, I'm a half-elf. Maybe it doesn't like elves? Because I'm a half orc and doesn't seem to be afraid of me, right? I mean, maybe it's a warlock thing. That too? Or because you use magic? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I I reach my hand up to, to touch its head. Make an animal handling check. I back out of the room. I don't want to spook it. All right. Um, it lets you touch it, but and it it relaxes when Eleanor leaves the room. Just okay. Uh, you're you're free to go, Pegasus. Um, he's not gonna hurt you, but um, you know, you can come out of here with us if you want. I just start leaving. Make a religion check. Okay, you know that Pegasi are celestial creatures. Again, there's one of each creature type in here. Obviously, the pixie is a fey, the pegasus is a celestial. Um, what's the celestial guy right. against? Against a warlock with a fiend patron? Hmm. 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 What could it be? Could it really be that it lives in the world of angels and Eladar is chaotic evil? <laughs> could it be that? <laughs> Maybe. Isn't Scully chaotic evil? No. We may never know. No? Scully is chaotic neutral. Oh. Yeah. Don't judge me. I'm neutral. Chaotic <laughs> stupid. 
That too. Of he doesn't. All right. So, what are these other creatures? Oh boy, that's gonna be toughy. Um, Monster make piece. both of you can make three intelligence checks. This is the weird room. Uh, let's see. Scully wow. got an 18, a 6, and a 12. Uh, well, unfortunately, you both rolled high on the first one. So you both know that this is a dark mantle, the top one. And a dark mantle is a monstrosity. Um, that is very nice. Neither of you know what this big floating balloon thing is with the one eyeball. Um, and then... Uh, Aladar's mom used to have one of these. Hey, uh, this is this is <laughs> called a flump. Um, and the flump is an aberration, meaning it's from like an alien plane. Hmm. Gesture to the Pegasus to see if I like do like the unlocking. Um, you know, you hear, key. you hear in your head, Aladar. You hear, hi. Can you let me out? My goodness. Hey, who's that? <laughs> I'm the flump. Can sure, you buddy. let me out? I can let you out. That'd be great. How long you been in here? Long time. Oh, hey, don't, you know what? We killed the guy that put you in here. Ah. Uh... Yeah, I was in here like 35 Blarblacks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, right? That is crazy, bro. All right. I want to open the door and let that boy okay. out. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, I've done enough here. All right, cat. You can deal with them. Be safe. All right, Eldar, when you come in, do you touch the balloon thing? I don't touch anything. All right. You unlock the <laughs> thing? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he comes out. He just kind of floats along. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Stay safe, brother. <laughs> okay, it passes through the wall. Make a constitution saving throw. Five. Okay, it hits the thing, bursts into flames, and dies. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Eldar, you hear your head? Oh god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what are you guys doing? Scully goes through. Uh, make a Constitution saving throw. Fifteen. Uh, you take two fire damage. You know, funny enough, that thing had five hit points, so if I'd rolled that, it would have survived. <laughs> oh, no, it had seven. I'm sorry, it had seven hit points. Oh, just a really lucky unlucky. roll. The, so the pixie's, just, the pixie's just, like, standing there, like, tapping its finger on its cheek, like, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> well, for pixie, you must have heard him say it multi many times, right? The pixie, you can't understand. The pixie says... La 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 la. That's not it. Didn't work. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to go grab that raincoat. All right. And put it on. Okay. Um. <laughs> the raincoat on. How are these? Uh. Oh yeah. Uh, well, no. How are these uh, creatures in this room acting right now? Um, this thing isn't moving other than its eyeball just kind of following you. Uh, this mm -hmm. thing seems super aggressive. And it's in its so. Mm -hmm. Like, Too it stuff. probably wants to eat you. Don't mm -hmm. open the one thing. Don't let him out. <laughs> they say. <laughs> And with it, what was the other one called? The big one? This? At least. Neither of you know what it is. You don't know what it is? You guys might be able to figure out what type of creature it is, because it's the only one I haven't said. Is it, is it an orc? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, orcs are humanoids, and the Eric Croker had that one covered. So, uh, yeah, I don't remember what all the things are. Well, that's okay. But my character probably Did we get uh, one? Of those? Your character probably does, but he rolled an eleven, which wasn't enough. So he oh, primordial. The sixteen was primordial. Yeah. Um, that's not only it's not a type of creature. It's not a creature type. A beast? We the, do beast be the beast was the flying snake. Fuck. Alright, D&D Beyond it is. Oh, come <laughs> on, no, don't cheat. I'm not cheating, I'm just going on another website. <laughs> 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 Alright, I want to let him go. Well, he's not chained at all. He's just floating there. Oh. I... Motion my arms to the door, and then... You motion your arms to the door, and then you look at it, and it's ten feet wide and ten feet tall, and then you look at the door, and you look back at it. Yeah, he's not going to fit. How do you get in there? Jem wonders as she imagines what the room, room must look like. <laughs> <laughs> out, out of the room, Scully is explaining how, yeah, that thing's really big, and the door isn't so big, and Jem goes, well, how do you get in there? <laughs> yeah. Um, Minimize spell or something. We found a beast select construct dragon elemental and fey. Yes. Okay. That's that's, awesome. a, that's a horrible way of. Um, I'm out. gonna. So I got a raincoat on. I want to see if I can pass through that barrier. I'm gonna leave the room. Okay. Walk through the barrier. All right, make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> you take six fire damage. Oh, man. Wow. Of course. He didn't take, he didn't even write down his damage from before. It did. It was on my temporary hit points. All right. Is he going to survive getting through? Um, mm. She doesn't seem to think so. Um. What about even with the raincoat on it? He still took all that damage. Oh yeah, yeah. raincoat wasn't for fire. Um. One has an anti fire thing. No. All right. The Pegasus just comes. <laughs> Just yeah. bursting through all of you guys, barely fitting down the hallway. And it just, like, gets to the stairs and just... The feathers go flying everywhere huh? as it scoots through the door. Shouldn't even be possible, but I say it is. It's got a shield, um, but... I just start axing safe? my way through the wall. Oh, here. But... You do what? <laughs> so what if I just start axing my way through the wall right here, just breaking through to the other side? You just go around the bear. <laughs> I mean, you want to use... I mean, granted, it's a magic axe, so it won't ship. But you want to use an axe to chop through a brick wall and then solid stone. You're strong. It right. might take a day. I just feel bad for the poor pixie. No one else is helping. All I have is ice knife. That's not really going to use a spell slot. I don't know if so, I really want to do so that. So can I, Joe, would I be able to use Thunderstep with the with the fairy to get her past the barrier? Yeah, why not? Uh, right, do that. Po post Thunderstep. The hmm. only um, restriction I can think of is targeting. Uh, target. Each creature. Okay, yeah, you're targeting yourself. So when you're casting a spell... Um, you need to have, you need to be able to see what you're targeting in order to target at it. So, for example, if you had an opaque wall in front of you, you would not be able to cast Fireball, even if even if you could go through the wall, because you can't see what you're targeting. Like, mm -hmm. that's how the magic works. Uh, but a lot of teleport spells target yourself, which means you can teleport through it, because you aren't targeting through the wall, you're targeting yourself. So that's totally mm -hmm. going to work. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay, Scully, move out of the way. Okay. Um, so I'll walk back through. Grab her. Okay, yeah. And 
Well, you get through. Ray, good, good thinking. Good job. It kisses you on the cheek. Oh. <laughs> I blush. <laughs> Right. It's uh, hanging little... around for the time being, at least. You want? Does it want to meet our our imp friend? Uh, let's just. Imps and pixies get along. <laughs> Pegasus is probably gonna be fighting the imp when we get up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great guess. When you get up, the you don't see either of them anywhere, and when you look outside, the Pegasus is chasing the crow around in the sky. <laughs> trying to, he it, and the Pegasus is obviously trying to kill it. I would guess that the it's imp okay. Is he helped us free you. You, you walk out and the the air croaker is like squaw 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 squaw. <laughs> Man, this language barrier thing is a real pain in the ass. The pixie goes <laughs> The Pegasus goes <laughs> and Fez goes fuck you. <laughs> Billy's just yelling at the top of his lungs. I got a huge butt crack. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all well, right. when all of this calms down, um, I would have the pixie stick around if you tried to talk to it, if you could figure out a way to talk to it. But the Pegasus does leave eventually. Mm -hmm. um, the Pegasus is not sticking around pirates. That's not how yeah. it works. It doesn't like evil things. Um, number one and Aladar are both evil. Mm -hmm. So the Pegasus is not sticking around. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I will tell you guys, just for the sake of being a completionist, that balloon thing was a gas spore. It is a plant. Mm. Oh. It has huh. one hit point, and if you pop it, it explodes with poisonous gas. Oh. Um, and if you fail the saving throw, not only do you take poison damage, but you are infected with a disease as the spore invade your nervous system, killing you in a number of hours. You're such a piece of shit. Yeah, as soon as I walk in the room, you touch the, the big bug. I know. <laughs> <laughs> touch it? It has, it has it? one hit point. <laughs> so just touching it explodes? No. Oh, you gotta, you, you have to actually, kill it. but but if he touched it, it would have attacked him, which causes the saving throw. It's a, it's a DC 10 Constitution saving throw, and if you fail, you are infected with the disease. <laughs> After the creature dies, it sprouts 2d4 tiny gas spores that grow to full size in seven days. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> And I will also say the only reason that's the creature I used is because it's the only plant that can fly. <laughs> Why do we have a druid that can't speak Sylvan and doesn't care about other creatures? Yeah. Huh? That's harsh. She likes water creatures, Travis. She's a water genasi. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I just thought it was funny that you just wanted to leave all those. You could have gone in and talked to the gas. I didn't. Though. I didn't want to leave them. I just didn't want to injure myself by going in there. I thought we could try to figure out how to get in there without doing that, but you guys were all like, "I'm going in." Joe, um, does my message spell um, require that both recipients know the language? The spell to work? No. Will they understand you? No. They hear what you say. It's not psychic. They literally hear it, and nobody else can. But it is not psychic. That flump was psychic. That flump would have been a great way for you guys to talk to it, and then have it talk to other things, but it died in the fire. Mm. I didn't know yeah, it was such a stupid that. creature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, it just tried to leave. I don't know. And then it died. You didn't. You couldn't tell it was stupid based on the way it was talking. No. Bloodlust. Didn't, didn't your mom hey. have one? Wasn't that the case? Yeah, your, your mom, mom had, had one. one. Yeah, him. Jesus. And he solves mysteries all the time. So. <laughs> Flumps are friggin' weird. 
All right, I will keep the pixie here for now in case you guys figure out a way to talk to it next time. The air croaker has also not left, and Fez seems to be sticking around. But if you if you never find a way to talk to the pixie, it is going to leave. Mm. Um, but the other two seem to want to stick around. Cool. If you could figure out a way to talk to the Eric Croker, he could probably join your crew. Ooh. Speak? He can talk. He just he speaks Orin only. Okay, so we got to figure out how to well, speak Orin. He speaks Orin and Eric Croker, which doesn't really help you. Oh, what the hell do I know? I mean, one of you, one of you knows Primordial, which is close. It's like Primordial and Primordial. Orin is, is like. You can speak Spanish and it speaks Italian. So it's like you can kind of get concepts across, but it's not the same language. Languages in this game. Huh? Is there a way to learn languages in this game? Oh, well, there is, but I mean, the easiest way is to just use spells that let you talk languages. Languages? Huh? Um, we should check the library again. I can I can prepare tongues, and then that would work. But I gotta rest again to be able to learn it. Right. What about you? Um, wait, tongue? I can. Oh. I can learn tongues as well. Oh wait, no. Uh, I will also. Yeah. I, I will say that like over time, you could teach the Arakrokra your language, but after a while, you figure out that his name is Clark. Nice. Clark. I can I can use a spell. To do a beast bond, but it only lasts ten minutes. Doesn't that only work on beasts? Yes. Beasts, beasts in this game are basically regular animals, or the very large versions of those animals. So, like a giant, I don't know, alligator counts as a beast, but like an alligator with two heads is a monstrosity. Humanoid, the, the fairy is a fae. And the imp is a, a fiend. Yeah. The Eric Croker is also a humanoid, though. Um, so <clears throat> we're stopping for tonight. Um, I hope nobody was bored. Uh, I was really worried that the session would be really boring for everybody. Um, no. Was... We had some fun moments, but I, I just, I like, I know there's a lot of, like, technolo magically technological bullshit going on. And I'm just really trying to stress that, like, if you guys don't care about that stuff, then fine, it doesn't matter. You can <clears throat> do this however you want. I'm friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Imp the imp and the Eric Roker will definitely both join the crew. Nice. Um, and the cool thing about the Imp, most Imps can't turn into monkeys, but I've decided that Fez can. <laughs> Fez, Fez can be your little ship monkey. I like Fez. He's funny. <laughs> Um, and he will trade you guys things for things. Sweet. Yeah. Oh. What else these cigarettes? So, um, <laughs> you guys have figured out a lot. You still have, I'm pretty sure you still have some objects you haven't figured out, but I, I don't know. I don't remember. So really, um, the thing next time, and I, I was hoping it would only be one more session, uh, but we'll see. It depends on how long you guys talk. Um, you want to figure out how you want to approach and then how you want to take down the ship. And really your goal is to take down the ship whatever way you think is easiest. Um, certainly using the powder can make your ship fly, but keep in mind if you just like fly up to it, this thing has like a million cannons on it. Um, right. Your ship does not. So like if you just fly up to it, they're just going to blow you up in one turn. So however you do it, don't be stupid. I don't want to just kill you guys in the first turn. Pretty dumb. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know how the captain gets his bloodlust. So. My what, blood what did we get on our ship when we bought like an upgrade that one time? Uh, flame Where? resistant sails. That's right. Which has come in handy multiple times. I think twice already. That's come in handy. Where yeah, you got hit hit by fire and it didn't do too much because they were resistant. I mean, certainly if you're trying to take out a ship, if you can just destroy its sails, then they can't maneuver at all, and then you just kick their ass. So, fire-resistant sails was a good choice. 
But yeah, I and again, like I don't have a. Well, this is how they're supposed to do it. Like, I'll go along with whatever the hell plan you guys want to do. The ship is set up as to how it works. So, come up oh. with whatever you want, and we'll do how it. How large is the ship? How many feet? I think the blueprints might say. I don't remember. Uh, the squares are five foot on the blueprints. Blueprints of it. I don't know where it is. Schematics, 3.5. Look the uh, journal thing at the top. I think that's right. Um, 150 feet, maybe? <sighs> Hold on, I can look up. It should say on the blueprints if it doesn't. Uh, the ship is, yeah. It's one. It's actually 150 by 35. Your ship is 60 by 20. Wow, tiny. <laughs> Gets yeah. the job done. It's, this Dude, thing is friggin' huge. That's true. Yeah. Didn't hear you complaining yesterday. <laughs> ship. It's more than twice as it, it's 250 percent as long as your ship. Our ship's much more maneuverable. I was just trying to see if I could bail I mean, our this, ship. I mean, this ship can fly, but you can go ahead and believe you're more maneuverable. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ours can too. As I hold up my bag of pixie dust. 24 hours. It's not pixie dust anyway. Didn't we decide it's not pixie dust? It's not pixie dust. Yeah, know what I mean. Cloud powder. Cloud powder, yeah. Blue magic. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was something he was using just for his personal vehicle. That was not what he used for the uh, flying flagship. Uh. Okay, well, I don't want to keep you guys too long. So next week, we'll see if we can do it in one session. All right. Good luck, Sounds good. Okay. All right, love you guys. Bye, everybody.